My name is Farrell Owens. I'm the facility manager for Percy D. Miller Water Treatment Plant. I've been at the water plant now for 13 years as the manager. I think it's very important that people understand where their water comes from. I want everybody to know what it takes to get that water in the morning when they get up. The city of Winchester was the very first city to ever put water pipes in the ground. We weren't the first to feed well water to a community, but we were the first to put pipes in the ground. In 1808. So it took 10 inch diameter oak logs and a local doctor invented a horse driven boring machine to bore the two inch holes in the logs so that they could be driven together with a coupler and run down to Loudon Street. In 1891, uh, a second source was found, Rouse Spring. And then in, in 1920, they did a three million gallon tank. That's Tennyson ground storage tank. But the water consumption got up to four million gallons a day. And the spring water would only do 2.8 million gallons a day. So they had to come up with a different source of water. And so what they did in June 15, 1957, the Percy D. Miller Water Treatment Plant came online as a 10 million gallon day water treatment plant. We get our water from the North Fork of the Shenandoah River. The water treatment plant is actually located 32 Pence Land Road in Middletown. We pump 14 miles to town. We get our water directly out of the river, possible road runoff, uh, a construction runoff, uh, anything, any rain event that gets into that, washes anything off into that river, comes by our intake. In 2017, we drew an average of seven million gallons per day. It's a water flows from the river through a bar screen inch and a half wide screens to keep the large debris out. It goes from there, gravity flows into the raw water pump station, into the wet wells, where four 350 horsepower motors pump water up to the treatment plant. Once water gets to the plant, the raw water or river water, we feed ferric chloride. Throw in the ferric chloride into a flash mix, which throws all the water together and gets the organic negative particles attached to the positive chemical and creates a larger particle we call flock. It goes through three more mixing stages until it gets to the settling zone. Once it gets to the settling zone, that larger flock we've created falls to the bottom of those basins. It takes about two hours for the water to flow through those basins, gives that flock enough time where we'll average probably about 90% of all the organic matter we've pulled up so from the river will settle out in those tanks. After it goes through the settling, we skim through troughs. If you take it right off the top, since these are exterior basins, you'll get leaves, any type of debris you're going to find outside. So we, we, we pull the water through troughs. The troughs have holes about six inches down. And that way you're not pulling water right off of the top. That water goes on to six multimedia filters. These multimedia filters are anthracite coal, sand, and gravel. Turbidity is your ability for light to shine through water. And the less, the most more resistance light has trying to shine through water, the higher the turbidity. EPA standard is that we can't put out any more than a 0.3 turbidity to the public. We put out consistently a 0.03 to the public out of that treatment plant. It does 10 times greater than is what's required by EPA. So after the water goes through the multimedia filters, it goes into a 42 inch pipe going to our two 1.5 million gallon storage tanks. In that line, we feed chlorine we feed caustic soda. We feed a corrosion inhibitor. We also feed flora. After it goes through, after all the chemicals are added, it goes to our two 1.5 million gallon tanks. The water goes through the east tank and then through the west tank. This is called chlorine contact time, CCT. It allows the chlorine to find the bacteria, enough time for it to find the bacteria and destroy it before we pump that water to town. We pump water to the community, three 500 horsepower pumps. Everything in the plant is operated off a SCADA system. 
There are seven locations throughout the plant where you can operate the entire plant from a computer. Everything is monitored, everything is alarmed. Every chemical, every setting, every turbidity, every, everything is alarmed in it. We do three times a month bacteriological testing in town. We have 40 locations. We go, we draw the samples, we draw 10, 10 each time, bring them back, run the bacteriological samples, and it's a report that we send to the state on a monthly basis. We also do state testing once a year in January. A lot of different types of testing, herbicides, nitrates, there's, there's a lot of different testing the state requires and we get the reports back. Uh, the monitoring is the main thing, the daily 24 hour day, seven day a week, non-stop monitoring. Our system never stops. I think what's most important about this interview is that everybody understands where the water comes from. I want everyone to know how important their water is. I mean, what's more important than water? Would you give your cell phone up for water? Would you give your car up for water? Or would you keep your car and not get water? Nothing you own, nothing you can desire, nothing you can possess is more important than water. Other than oxygen, nobody makes oxygen. I don't want people to look at us as if we're accomplishing so much. I just want them to understand where their water's coming from. And when they get up in the morning and they turn on the faucet or they get in the shower or fill the laundry and they, they push a button and they get water and it happens, it's there, it's, it, it's there without question. Pretty simple, it's pretty easy. And I, I just want everybody to know how important their water is, how important we take cleaning the water for the public.